In return, we acquired further protection of our shores. We received a chain of bases stretching from Newfoundland to British Guiana. These bases threw a steel wall around the Caribbean. These bases gave new safety to the Panama Canal. It was now clear to the aggressors that we were conscious of the threat they represented to our country. Mr. Burley, Assistant Secretary of State, will tell us how they got together and tried to scare us off. From 1936 on, it became increasingly clear to the world that Germany, Italy, and Japan were pursuing a common pattern of aggression, both in Europe and in the Far East. On September 27, 1940, these three powers signed the so-called Pact of Berlin, or Tripartite Pact, a treaty of far-reaching alliance. By that treaty, it was provided that the three countries would assist one another with all political, economic, and military means when one of the powers was attacked, most particularly the use of the word attacked, by a power not then involved in the European war or in the Chinese-Japanese conflict. The last of these provisions was aimed directly at the United States. Tokyo celebrates. Berlin hiled itself for us. It was clear now that the three Axis countries definitely stood against us. More anxious than ever, we watched the life and death struggle for the possession of the skies over Britain. propaganda and confusion of recent months, it is now obvious that England is losing the war. England will not only survive, England will win. So, when we were asked, should we keep out of war or aid Britain even at the risk of war? Aid Britain, even at the risk of war, 68%. Thus, the march of conquest of the self-term master races changed our national attitude from 1936, when only one out of 20 Americans thought we would be involved in war, to 1941, when 14 out of 20 Americans were willing to risk war if war was necessary to ensure Axis defeat. I ask this Congress for authority and for funds sufficient to manufacture additional munitions and war supplies of many kinds to be turned over to those nations which are now in actual war with aggressor nations. Our most useful and immediate role is to act as an arsenal for them as well as for ourselves. We shall send in ever-increasing numbers ships, planes, tanks, guns. That is our purpose and our pledge. By an overwhelming majority, Congress passed Lend-Lease, Bill Number 1776, another Declaration of Independence, Independence from Tyranny, 1941 style. On April 6, 1941, the Nazi juggernaut overran into Yugoslavia and Greece. On June the 22nd, 1941, the success-crazy Nazis took their longest step toward world conquest. Without any declaration of war, they blitzed into Russia. We were determined not to let down any nations defending themselves against unprovoked attack. So we extended Lend-Lease to these new victims. Now the Lend-Lease products of our factories were being unloaded in the bomb ports of Great Britain 
at the Red Sea ports for the British in Africa. Lend-Lease was being hauled over the Burma Road to China. Lend-Lease was piling up in Murmansk and Iran for Russia. Why did we supply war materials to the countries defending themselves against Axis aggression? Was it our natural sympathies for people unwilling to lose their freedom? Was it our ancient antagonism to conquerors imposing their rule on others by force? Yes, partly. But principally, it was because the American people had become certain that they were on the list of free nations to be conquered. Two worlds are in conflict, two philosophies of life. One of these two worlds must break asunder. And we were the leading example of that free world that Hitler was committed to breaking asunder. What would have been our defensive position if the aggressors had succeeded in conquering Britain, Russia, and China? German conquest of Europe and Africa would bring all their raw materials, plus their entire industrial development, under one control. Of the two billion people in the world, the Nazis would rule roughly one quarter. The 500 million people of Europe and Africa, forced into slavery to labor for Germany. German conquest of Russia would add the vast raw materials and the production facilities of another of the world's industrial area. And of the world's people, another 200 million would be added to the Nazi labor pile. Japanese conquest of the Orient would pour into their factory the almost unlimited resources of that area. And of the peoples of the earth, a thousand million would come under their rule, slaves for their industrial machine. We in North and South America would be left with the raw materials of three-tenths of the Earth's surface against the axes with the resources of seven-tenths we would have one industrial region against their three industrial regions. We would have one-eighth of the world's population against their seven-eighths. If we, together with the other nations of North and South America, could mobilize 30 million fully equipped men, the Axis could mobilize 200 million. Thus, an Axis victory in Europe and Asia would leave us alone and virtually surrounded facing enemies 10 times stronger than ourselves. These are the reasons that led us, the American people, to change the Neutrality Act, to send aid to Britain, to Russia, to China, to make ourselves the arsenal of democracy. These are the reasons why, now, the first American troops set forth into the Atlantic to occupy new bases in Greenland and Iceland with the consent of their local government. In our hands, bases of defense. In Nazi hands, bases of offense. 